Hey people, Broken Puppet back again with another video for you today. This one is how to draw an old school gypsy head. And that's pretty cool, talking through the works as usual. Sure you're gonna love it. So yeah, enjoy the video and I'll see you next time. Hey people, it's Broken Puppet back again. And that today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to draw an old school gypsy head. Now uh, the good thing with this, you can do this, well, as I always say, you can always do it so many different ways, but you can turn this design into a a whole bunch of designs. The gypsy head can be turned into an old school, like you know, lady design. It can be turned into like a Native American girl, you know, a Mexican style girl, and that just by changing little things like you know the headwear, the hair, sh you know, style, and that you know, so design can be worked into so so many different things, and it's real simple to do. And that now to start with, and that now. This one, this this head, I'm going to draw at a slight angle. And now, if you was doing this normally, you could do this. I'll tell you what, I'll put this slightly at an angle so it makes sense when you're drawing it straight up. Do a box. Just sketch out with a pencil a nice size box. Try and get it as roughly even as possible. You know, it ain't got to be perfect, but roughly even. Do a cross down the middle. So you divide it into four boxes. And that. And now from this, I'm going to teach you the structure of the face. Now I learned this from like you know old school comics sort of style, and this is why I, I, I've always done it like this for years and years and years. And now I don't do the boxing out now when I'm normally doing it, but it's just to show you how I learned. And that do a curve up here from this corner, then all the way around, around here, curving under this line. You see here, you want it to loop and come under here. Now, I know it looks a bit weird at the moment, but trust me. Then when you got the centre bit, little curve up, curve down to about just just under half, just over halfway between this line and that. From it here, from the centre line, come down to almost at the bottom. Bring your line across and bring it back up. And that. Now this is the basic structure of the face. Now from here we undo. Where this line comes across here. Dead center again. And that bring out a triangle. You bring out a line outside the box, and then curve it back in. No, not too, you know, like almost, almost like you know, right angle, but just a little bit more than a right angle. And that and you want to come out to roughly about the same point as where this ear is. And that to get an idea of what you know, where you want it from, like you know, bring a curve like this, and bring another curve halfway down. That will show you the rough line where you want the mouth and the nose to end. Now once you've got this, you can learn how to put the nether mouth in. Now what you want to do is bring a line from the top of the tip of the nose coming down to about here. You see where this line curves up? And that and now what this will do, this teaches you where to put the lips. Next what you want to do is you want to bring a curve in the bottom of that nostril bit, come out, and where it touches that line is where that top lip ends. So bring a curve, come back that way, and bring it back so it's coming onto this line you've done. You know, from here curving down. And just bring up another little bit there for now and then follow that line you initially done and just curve it and that can be pretty sketchy for now so you're just teaching you where the mouth goes and that now because he's up the gypsy you know she's not going to be overly happy so I'm going to bring this little line down here at the end I'm going to have it sort of curving down a bit and at the bottom of the lip cut out to where that line is and that bring it around for the chin and just curve that round Make that line a bit stronger, and boom, there you got that. Goes into the lips, and that now, at this point, make the top lip a little bit more fuller, and just make that bottom lip just a little bit thinner if you want. It's up to you. It depends on the kind of character you want the person to have. And that now, where this centre line was in the box, you know where the nose was. Bring another line, come down about halfway through that mouth, and that. And what this will do, this will teach you where the nostril ends. So you bring in a curve just here. And you want to curve this nostril back around. This pen is dying, the pencil is dying on me. Um bear me just one sec, let's grab my little. There you go. And that and then where that line ends, just curve it back up again. But curve it on along that line. And that's where that nostril bit goes. 
and that. Where you've got the tip of the nose, just bring in another little line, just so it's not so pointy. Just curve it round, and just bend this line a little bit in. Just bring it in a touch bit further than the initial box, and that. And just bring in a little tiny line at the top, going back out, so you see you come in, and then just out just a touch. And now this is like the eyebrow bit, if you imagine. And that, so where that point comes out is where the eyebrow is going to curve around. And that, and just bring that line up for the forehead. And that, and that's the basic structure of the nose and mouth. Now the eye, very simple the eye. And that, just follow that line coming down here. And once you get about midway through the nose, just bring like a curve. That'd be roughly where the cheek goes. And from there, you can work out where the eye goes, because the eye is pretty much centered along that line where that bend starts. And then let's do this. Just bring a straight line at first across the top, like that. Bring another line across the bottom like that. And now the top line, you always want the top, you know, this top bit coming down further. You don't want this bottom line coming across here. It's a little weird. And you think the top line has to be more prominent. You know, it's the one that goes over the bottom. And just bring a little curve in the middle bit. Just do a little circle with the eye, but in the people in the middle. Now, where you put the pupil is very important because I want her looking up. And that's so I do the pupil slightly higher, I don't do it dead center. You see? And that. And now I follow that line from here, curve it round, and flick it out. Now, the eyebrow isn't going to be very realistic, but that's because of the style we're doing. The old school gypsy face isn't perfectly realistic. Like if I send it realistic, it come up a little bit and curve a little bit. I'm doing a nice curve here. Make that line more prominent. And now it's going to bring in the neck bit, just like that. And just put a little line there for now. Now I'm going to put it straight because I said, like I said, I was going to do it at an angle. So you see, when I put it like that, that's the angle I want her face to be looking in. Now I'm going to put a banner in this at the bottom, so I'm just going to quickly sketch in a banner. Really simple, just like a really long kind of S shape. You see, like, you know, curve here, bring that out there, and do the same thing going the other way. And that. Now in the end, just put like, you know, just curve that back around and do like a V shape there. Same thing there, just bring that around into a V shape. It's pretty messy at the moment, this is just getting like the structure where I'm thinking I want things. And that. Now I'm thinking I might put like a little bit of a rose here, so I'm just going to do like a little circle shape there. And then I might put one over here as well. And that. Now the reason why this head has got such a big back is because this back is where the hair goes. It teaches you how far to take the hair back. I know a lot of people take the hair back either way too far or way too short. And that it makes the face either look way too long or way too skinny. You know, this length is like the perfect length. You want the hairline to come there. And that. Now, for this particular style, the hair isn't going to be realistic. You know, because it's the old school gypsy tattoo style. And that's so one is going to put a curve here. Where I've got the hair coming out, you know, the outside. That's going to bring me a nice curve coming in. Another curve underneath. Another curve underneath. Now, this one I'm going to have going just over that ear bit, you see. And, that, and then on top I'm going to have like a, a, a gypsy bandana kind of thing. So I'm going to bring that line coming across there. Because I want the ball bit of the bandana bit to go here. I'll probably have that rose a little bit lower so it shows a little bit. I'm just going to do that and that's going to be like you know the uh, where the, the bandana ties at the bottom. Little line there where it kind of folds over. Bring that line back. Have it coming down here. And have the hair bit on the back here. Just like that. Simple. And, that, and then what I'm going to do, just here I'm going to bring a nice little curve, curve like that, and curve this way. And now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm, in this picture I want the wind to be blowing in this direction. So it's going to be blowing these little bits of hair in this direction. And that's so I'm going to have that, and then underneath the hair, you know, underneath the ear rather, you've got this little bit of hair I'm going to have curving here. And I'm going to do the same sort of thing, I'm going to curve it, and I'm going to have it flicking up this way. So I'm just going to do two little lines like that for now. And I'm going to do another little bit just on the outside here. And one just there. Maybe one there. And that. Now, I don't know what I'm going to write in it yet. I'll make that pose as I go along. But this is the basic structure for the drawing. Now, there's going to be little detail bits like uh, inside the actual ear. You know, if you want, you can put an earring. I'm going to put like this uh, sort of big sort of stud thing in the ear, kind of like a little kind of bobbly bit around it. So I'm going to do a circle, a couple of circles underneath. Little dangly bit with another circle. 
you know, you can just make that up, you know, like, you know, just go crazy with the jewelry bits and that. Now, the inside of the ear, um, so I put on this side the paper so you see, you know, where we had this kind of shape. Now, you've got a bunch of ways to do this. A simple way, just bring another curve on the inside, curve in, like that, and just bring curve there and there. Always looks good. You know, another way you can do it, have it like that. Bring the curve around, bring curve there, little wheel curve there. You know, just play around, but you know, everyone's ear is different. Just make like the inside of the ear however you want it to look. Now, because it started, I don't want it to be too detailed, so I'm really just going to keep like a nice little kind of curve inside bit, little line, little flick. Nothing more than that. You now, that's all I want on the ear bit. Now that I have that, I'm going to go over the top and pin. I'm just going to use a basic like fine liner for this, a 0.8 uni pin, and that. Really, really good pins. Uh, this one's running out a bit, so I will use the other one over there. And that. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to go over the basic outline now. So as you can see, I just put in the basic, basic line work, just going over everything we just did, and that. And uh, what I do now is I show a few little detail bits, and I like the hair. Now this isn't like realistic hair when you're doing this style, and that is just more like uh, it's more like doing patterns, you know, like it's making it look stylized and good. And that's so what we're going to do. See, we got a like, curve. We're going to have repeated curved lines going the exact same way till we get to the ends. You can do these as many or as few as you want. And I like to do quite a lot, but if you struggle getting parallel, do a few less. And that's what you want. Just bring that curve around. Go there. And just keep doing that same line. Until you get right to the very top. Now always start with like, the bottom of the hair curve. And then just follow that through. Don't start at the top like going lines here because it just look weird. Okay. Just like that. And then just bring that line across there to join up. And just do the same thing here, here, here. And on the back, curving down like this with the back of the hair. And that's how I quickly do that now. And voila. That's the hair detail done. The next bit, get yourself a rubber. So off better rubber. Just rub out all that pencil work. And then we left like the basic face. Now at this point find me a pin and that now I can't describe this without being too complicated when it comes to face shading it's a bit a bit more kind of free than it is like in our other styles and that it's not an exact science yeah like that colour and that, now you can do some black and white you can do some colour you can do it any way you want I'm going to use colour so I've got myself like a nice flesh tone and that you know you can use these pencils you know if you want or like I said black and white doesn't really make too much difference and I'm going to show you the key points to shade and then I'll start off without the basic the jawline at the bottom just get a nice big thick line following that all the way around just there second one bottom bit of the nose and that coming from that tip of the nose, and across just a bit higher than the nostril, curving around with that nostril, connecting up there. And that, because the nose always makes a shadow bit there. Just underneath the chin, little flick. I like to do one just on the edge of the mouth, just here, just flicking down a bit. And that now, 
here you've got two choices depending on how you want the light. When you've got this little cheek bit, you can have it coming from the outside of the cheek or the inside where the nose is. And now for this one, I'm just going to randomly choose and I'm going to do it on the inside. So I'm just going to flick that in, come up around the eye bit there. And now, now the inside of the nose, you don't want to touch the line, you want to leave a little white gap, you know, quite thick. And just start thin and go a bit thicker until you get to the, the eye a bit. And colour just around there. And that now underneath the eyebrow, I mean uh, above the eyebrow, no, <laughs> underneath the eyebrow, above the eyelashes rather. I like to colour this bit usually quite solid. And when you get to this edge, I like to curve it to meet up with the edge of the eyebrow. And that now I will eventually go over with darker pens and that, but this is just showing you where the basic shadows are. And that. Do another one just at the top of the lips, just there. In that. And then right here, remember that line we've done going from the mouth bit here? You want to roughly just flick in your pen with your pencil in that general direction. And that just creates that kind of cheekbone kind of thing. And that. Then just a little bit of shadow underneath the hair. And that's all like, you know, the basic, you know, shadow positions. You can do other ones that I've shown you, you know, just like you can do the forehead bit here, if you want. And that you could have, you know, a bit more come down from the bottom. Underneath the chin, I mean the neck line, you want to get a nice shadow. So I could drop. Underneath any hair bits, like see here, we've got this hair going across here. I'm going to put a shadow underneath that, and a shadow underneath this one. So you just follow that shape just a little bit lower than what it actually is. Going around there. This bottom bit, just a few little flicks here and there. I'm going to shading most of the ear, and that's so we're shading that sort of centre bit there, dark on the inside bit, and just leave a little white bit just around there. And that, now you got other bits and you can do in that, but that's the basic areas of shading. And that now what I do is I always put in like a lighter shade, and then I work up to my darker shades. And that's so you've got like a flesh tone, I'm going to use a slightly darker flesh tone. And then what I do, is I put that on a little bit thinner. So, if you imagine when I've done that neckline, maybe done that big thick line. I do this, but a little bit thinner and a little bit lower. So you just kind of like that. Get this taken up quite a bit of that shadow. Trick is to kind of shade up to your almost up to your normal shading, but leave that little extra line around it. And then when you've got the edge, if you're using these kind of pens, the flex marker or the tree markers, you know, just go back to your original colour and just work over that dark edge, the pen you just used. And that does that just helps blend it in. So you just like that, and now you see how that slightly darker shade there, making this chin a lot more 3D. And just do the same thing for a lot of the areas, like uh, under, above that eyelash and underneath the eyebrow. It's going to darken up. Now the reason I'm starting with flesh tones is because it's a lot easier to mix in other colours. Like eventually I'll put, I might put on a bit of makeup. I'll, I'll, I'll put a bit of makeup on her rather. <laughs> and, and it's a lot easier to add a purple or something into like a dark brown than it is to add this colour into those colours, if you know what I mean. You know. Purple is a much harder colour to make, make uh, to mix into than the flesh tone is. Sorry, it's a bit late. I'm a bit tired. It's like early hours in the morning for me. And that, but yeah, just so uh, I'm just going to flick in just on those pretty much all the shading, just a little bit thinner, like within the line shapes that we've done. I'm literally just flicking it in a lot of places. So it just comes in soft. And now we got that, like I said, I'm just going to go back to the other colour and just blend those out just by going over the edge and just bringing out that shading a bit more now. Yeah, 
so like I said, usually just like one step at a time. No. Now, you want to make sure you're using a pretty decent bit of paper, you know, you ain't got a be nothing fancy, just like this is like, you know, like a basic uh, ebony sketchbook, you know, the paper's fairly thick. What you want to do, what I did a lot of time, just get a rough, crappy bit of paper, bring it underneath, and it stops it bleeding through onto the next page. You know, see, it will bleed through a bit on here sometimes, because they're thick markers. But, yeah, just get yourself like a basic, decent, cheap sketchbook. You know, I mean, you can get these up for about, you know, like, sort of, five, ten pounds in certain places. You know, they're not overly expensive. You know, well worth it. You know, so yeah, like you see there, we just bring out a shading a little bit. You know, so we just flick it out from where it was. And you get like a nice shadow to the face. And you know, so we'll call that for the face for now. And now we're going to a few other little detail bits now. Now the eye, the pupil. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do like a little circle shape just in here at the bottom. A little circle shape at the top. And now they're going to put a black circle in the middle, but not going over those initial circles. So what it does, it creates like a little highlight, like a little sparkle in the eye. And that. Uh, once I've done that, I'm going to grab me a thick black. And I'm just going to colour in certain areas, like the eyebrow. Because I'm doing a hair black, I'm going to do the eyebrow black. Just nice like that. I'm going to flick in a little bit of black on the top lip. Not a lot, just a little bit on one edge and a little bit on the other edge. And that, because you always want the top lip to be a bit darker than the bottom. And that doesn't matter what angle you're really drawing at, that always tends to be the case. And that, you know, there's a couple of cases where you might not want to. Where the hell did I put that lid? There we go. So just switch over to say a sharpie. Just like always. Red Sharpie is a really nice, good bold colour, and that. But it's only really good for colouring in bold, and that they're useless for shading. So we just colour in that lips red. And now we find me another black because this black is running out. Blacks run out so quick sometimes. Black Sharpie. Right now with the hair. And that now, there's loads of ways to shade this. You can do the basic, just like you know, basic shade. But this is like a nice stylized one. This gets like a really nice kind of highlight. And what we're gonna do is cut a line across, cut a line across, across from like you know with the angle they're going. And we're going to colour in that top bit, solid black. Colour in that bottom bit, solid black. You can do this with browns and blondes if you want. I always like black. Black always gives it a nice vintage kind of look. I'm just going to do this on all the ones. So just do like a nice big gap. It's got to be a fairly big gap in between. Don't do a thin one. And that. Once you put the grey in, it makes sense. Now I'll quickly stop there for a sec, just so I can sort of show you how to shade these bits before I do the rest. So you see we've got these big white sections in each of the hair curves. And now you can have them sort of crossing over into the other ones, but I like to do them separate for every kind of section we've done. And that, you get yourself a grey, then go over the edge and do like another, you know, bold line. I'm starting off with a dark, dark grey here. like that and once you let that I mean they tend to dry quite quickly and then just go back over the edge again just to darken it up and just kind of I know you shouldn't really but let that black bleed out just a touch and by letting it bleed out a touch we'll just make it blend a little bit just enough to mix it properly then go down to a very light grey and just blend that hard grey out now to blend it out, like I said, you know, you just go down and just keep going over the edge. Now this one's almost like, you know, water, it's like pretty much white, you know, there's hardly anything that comes out of it. But it just blends it out, you see, just by going over the edge. Just keep going over it. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing for the back bit here. I'm going to do a little bit here and colour this bit solid. And then we can do the rest. Right. Step by step. And now I've got the hair done, I'm going to put in a few little sort of uh, bits into the face now, like a bit of makeup and a bit of colour. And now to start with, let's see. Something a bit different, I'm going to put her eyeshadow like a bit of blue, so I'm going to put it very. Blech. Sorry, lose my words here. Speaking too quick. <laughs> and now I'm going to put a bit of blue as like an eyeshadow. And that's, I've got a very, very light blue. I'm just going to work that and just flick that into it. Just like that. And a little bit of the bottom. And I'm going to get my pen and I'm going to work in some eyelashes now. Some nice, thick, bold eyelashes. Now to do this, just bring that line across. And throw in some nice big curls. And that, do some of the bottom. Thicken up that line a bit. I like that top eye line to be quite thick. Now, now we got that. Let's see if I've got red that is running out. Yeah. Now if you've got these pens and they're running out, they come in very handy for flick shading. So on a bit of red just flicking into the cheek here. that in, get me my flesh tone, just flip that out, now there's lots of ways you can do that, I mean you can have the red coming from underneath the eye as well, which I quite like sometimes. Put a bit, a bit of contrast against the blue, but just to show you. And, that, and this really helps kind of bring down that cheek sometimes. It has a little bit of a rosy cheeks to it. And as you can see, I'm slowly building up that face, you know, the actual colour. Right. This bit adds, you know, you keep adding a bit more colour to this area, and then eventually the face becomes more solid. And that. Now, that's again a personal preference, you know, if you don't want to make it as solid, you can just keep it the way you had it before, or just keep adding bits into it. And that, but yeah, now we've done that. Get me that brown, get me that brown actually. Just bring in a few little harsh shadows now. These ones I'm not going to blend out, like just this one just over that chin bit. So I get a nice bit of a harder shadow. Just a few little bits underneath the hair. Don't want too many hard shadows, just like the bits where stuff is pretty close, like the hairline. The hair is very close, so it makes a very hard shadow. Grab me my light grey. It's got a bit of touch of shadow actually in the eye. Just so the eye doesn't seem too white. The eye's too white doesn't look real. Now I know this isn't completely realistic, but I want a, a little touch of realism in, you know, to, in it. Do, 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 do. Orange. Swap down to the earring bit. Just like that. And now we've got the bandana. Now the bandana you have many, many choices on. And actually you can do pretty much do any pattern you want. 
So for this one, do, 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 do. I'll bring one of my favourite ones. I'm going to bring in two lines, so I'll split it in two. And then what I do is say zigzags. If I show on this page here, so if you imagine you've got the gap bit here. You've got the two lines. Bring up one line, two line, three line. And then what you do, bring a line down from the top one, then one line, two line. So it's three lines going the other way. And then the same thing the other way, one line, one line, one line. So you can only repeat in three lines. One line, one line, one line. One line, one line. And just go, oh, and it gets like a really nice kind of pattern. And obviously, this one's going to be a little bit neater. And of course, you've got other ones like on the edge. You can keep them semicircles across the lines, which always looks pretty good. And now you can add like another little line. I mean, you go crazy, you could do like lines, just all random ones. And when you colour them in, they look pretty cool. But yeah, for this one, it's going to be that one I just told you. Bringing this line down here. Line up there. So, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So like see, I just repeat that pattern there and there. Looks pretty cool. And that and then just on the insides. In the inside it's gonna do a punch of like circle. Almost like polka dots. And that's so Just like that. Carrying it on to a little bit of the bottom bandana, so that pattern at the bottom bit there, there, and just putting some circles. Now, when I do the bandana, I like to generally use colours like green and stuff, like green, reds, and yellows, and I tend to find they're kind of like really nice gypsy colours. So you see, just colouring the basic centre bit green, just not doing the uh, circles. And, that, and then I'm going to colour in uh, these bits in red and yellow. Cool people. So as you can see, I just coloured the top bit. So you've got you know, the reds, the orange, colouring through that bandana bit. What I'm going to take the uh, dark grey and then I'm just going to put a few like shadow bits. And that so just flick up through there, get my darker shadow, the dark one actually. There we go. So it's a little bit sort of between that gap, just there, a bit over the sides. Just generally where it kind of tucks under, you see like it, it tucks under this uh, bow bit, and, that, and then the bow bit just across the bottom area. Just on the uh, under bit of this, so it's like a ball shape. So it kind of makes that little shadow. So you're just shading that little area just there. And flick down the middle, and flick up the side. It's pretty much for that. 
Now I'm going to colour in the rest. The roses, I'm just going to colour in basic like a <laughs> bloody phone. Right, yeah. The roses, I'm just going to colour in basic like I normally do. You know, you've seen them in my other videos and rose tutorials, so I won't talk you through them. And, that, and then I'll sort of show you how to do some scripts. And, and uh, yeah, I might do a little bit running outside, I don't know yet. I'll work it out. Cool, so we've got that that's the uh, roses done and just a little bit of brown just in the uh, banner and I'll put a little bit more detail around the outside in a bit but first I'm going to do the lettering I think I'm going to put loved and cursed and then now when you're doing these kind of banners you want the writing to take up the majority of the section inside the banner and you want it to kind of curve with it now one of the key things here is to work out your lettering space and that now cursed is what Loved is one, two, three, five. Curse is one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So curse is a six letter word. So that's going to take up slightly a bit more than loved is. And just do the and sign in the middle. So you kind of plan out, you know, you want to put your rough lines in. And that's so you know loved's got to fit in this section, and's going to fit in this section. And curse is going to be in this section just here, and that. So try to space it out. You know, in your head, just try to do the maths of how many letters there are to the spacing, roughly. And now for this, I'm going to do a really kind of old school basic font. I show on this one. And now with this, majority of it is up like straight lines and straight curves. And that. So loved is going to be like imagine a straight line down, and then at the bottom, and do a straight line across. And that on the edge of that. Going to bring up a curve on the top, and in the center of each letter, you can do this little curve just like that. And that when you do the circle, you're like O, you can go a bit funny, you know, with some letters in that. That little this O, I'm going to put like in you know, a nice little swirl at the top, kind of like that. And same, do a little swirl just going through the center on one side, and that love to be the same V, curve there. You know, just trying to get a rule and stick to the rule. Like the rule on this, straight curves, when it's not, you know, like curves bits, in that little curve in the middle. Straight line on top, straight line on the bottom. You can always make these a bit curved if you want to make it different. You know, I tend to do that a lot. So now I'm going to try to plot this in. So I'm going to divide this first bit, try to divide it up into five layers. One, two, So you know roughly how much space you got for each letter. Now if you're doing like the, the fancy kind of italic type right, and you know the uh, Latino style, and that you know the fancy bits, you know something like that, you wouldn't have to plot out so much. But because of doing this style, I really want to get it so it fits just perfect. And now, when I do lettering, I always do it in pencil first, so I make sure any mistakes I can rub out and come back on. And that's so, let's plot this in. Put L. 
And then as I do letters, I'm going to curve. Like when I do a straight line, I'm going to curve it with the shape of the banner. And I'm going to do my best to take up as much of it as I can. So I leave just a little gap at the top, a little gap at the bottom. I'm trying to make sure it's the same kind of length gap. See what I've done here, I've done this and I realise that the end is too close to the cursed and too far away from the loved. So I can just re-sketch that to be a little bit over that side. I'm doing my eyes around the right way. I'm doing it around the wrong way. I don't know how I make that mistake every damn time. See now if it's a lot more in there. There's a bottom bit. Now for this I'm going to use the Sharpie. You know, it's quite a thick pen. And that's thicker than my outline. And that. So it's going to go over this now. Once you've done that, just rub out your pencil. You can always spice it up at this point and put in little kind of effects and stuff like, you know, put a little drop shadow. It's always kind of random thing, but I always like to put a red line going through the center of them. I always think it looks cool. But that's just me, it's personal preference. Do, 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 do. Look at the black marker again. Black marker, right here we are. I'm just going to put in a bit of shadow just around the edges. I'm just going to flick in this black. Now, if you get a pen that's like one of these markers that's just running out, don't throw them away because they're perfect for doing this little kind of flick shading. You know, in certain areas. I 
down there. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to take my Sharpie again. I'm just going to thicken up certain lines you know, to make things stand out a bit. There we go, so as you can see, just like a thicker line around that bit, just a bit across the face to make the face stand out a little bit more. And that, anywhere else I should put this, yeah, it's just a touch bit I'm going to put across here. Now it's, it's hard to explain where to put these, you know, I mean, generally you have like the outline which you can always put it around. But a lot of time it's just down to your eyes, just trying to work out where would a thicker line look best, you know. Now having different size lines really does kind of make it jump out in certain areas and stand out. You know, so play about it. Don't be afraid to try and try new things. You know, if you do it and it doesn't look good, you know not to do it next time. But you've got to really try and experiment. Experimenting is the key. Two little detail lines. And there you have it. Voila, that is how to draw the gypsy head. And that uh, you can always change these up and that like if I get uh what's my example? Is that one I've done before? Uh, uh, this is a print of some of the ones I've drawn before. I'll show you. You can see like here, you know, you got like, uh, you can add the other bits, you know, this print's for sale on my Etsy. And that uh, you can add like a crow in there or something. See a like, different style bandana, you know, sort of centre part in and the hair having a gap and then starting again you know darker eyeliner around the eyes if you want like a darker shade and that you can have like a shoulder show in hair flow in having like a different style of rose little, little extra bits around the outside like here it's just a red circle with a yellow fill in and just red spikes all around the outside you know here you know like a mask with a skull on I mean that's a bit more advanced but you know experiment with ideas just think of something random and put it in there see if it works you know front view, slight angle view and that, you know, a bit like a Day of the Dead influence you know, you could have some fancy ornate stuff on it you know, there's endless ways to do these you know, this is just an example of the more traditional style you now with the traditional colouring and that, but yeah, play about with it and that's what you can do, you know, and uh, when you do it, send me a picture of what you've done to like my Facebook or send me the link on YouTube, you know, I love seeing what you guys have done you know, with what, you know, with what you've seen here but yeah, I hope that's helped you guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.